Welcome to the Armani Talks YouTube channel. I'm your host, Armani Talks. In this channel, I'm covering communication skills for you to level up your way with words and become much more articulate. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. Every Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I'm dropping brand new videos on topics such as public speaking, social skills, productivity, and much more. Join the tribe by hitting that subscribe button right on below, hit that bell notification, and never miss another video again. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Be sure to drop that like on your way in as we enter the world of productivity and talk about analysis paralysis. You're at that stage right now where you understand a lot of the theoretical information, yet for some strange reason, you find yourself self-sabotaging yourself anytime you're about to actually do something. You know the theory, but your body isn't experiencing the information. This is what I call analysis paralysis. Rather than immediately tell you what you're doing wrong, what I'm going to do is tell you a story about a person who is struggling with analysis paralysis. And it's going to be your goal to find out what this person did wrong. The reason that I'm not starting off this video immediately saying what you're doing wrong is because the ego is going to be like, no, 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 that doesn't apply to me and it's going to self-sabotage you further. But if you understand it from the story format, that's when the ego becomes tamed and is much more open to hearing the concepts of analysis paralysis. So if you're ready and excited for today's story, go on and drop that like for me right on below. This was around 2015. I had started an Amazon business and I was selling different products like tumblers and Bluetooth beanies. There was a moment when I went to this one event where I met this guy named Jerome who heard that I started the Amazon business. Immediately, he was captivated. He was like, yo, bro, I want to start the same thing, but I have no clue where to begin. Uh, can you help me out? Uh, can you mentor me? I just started myself, so I didn't feel comfortable mentoring this guy, but I did want to help him out. So I was like, how about this? I'll send some resources your way. And if you have any questions for me, you could ask me. In 2015, YouTube was the wild, wild west. There weren't too many uh, course creators out there. So you had to search for everything on your own. So me helping him out with the whole searching process would save him a lot of time. We exchange contact information and one week goes on by. One week later, he hits me up and he's like, you are money. I went through all of these videos, PDFs that you sent me, and I feel like I learned a lot. I'm ready to begin. But I have some questions I would like to ask you. What are you doing this Friday? I'd like to meet up with you. I'll buy you coffee too. And I need you to answer some questions. Who's going to turn down free coffee? So I agree. Friday, we meet up and this guy comes with a big stack of papers filled with questions. That's when in that meeting, he starts asking me all these useless questions. He was like, how many bullets do I need in my listing page? How many capital uh, letters should I have in my headline? What's the type of shadows that I should use uh, for my pictures? I'm spending hours answering this person's question, but eventually I'm just like, yo, bro, I think from the videos that you consumed, you have enough to begin. What you should do is you should hit up a supplier from Alibaba, negotiate a product, do some market research, etc., and get started, man. All these questions will make sense later on. But he looked at me and he wasn't sold. He was like, um, I see what you're saying, Armani, but I would like one more meeting with you. One more meeting with me? All right, uh, am I getting free coffee again? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna give you free coffee again. So next week we meet up again. And once again, he brings more questions, more useless questions at that. And he starts asking it to me left and right. And once again, I'm telling him, dude, these questions seem very important right now. But when you get started, you'll realize that these questions aren't that important. Just get started. But he's just like, I want to meet up with you one more time. 
And at this stage, I'm getting annoyed. I'm like, bro, honestly, just get started and get back to me, okay? Well, a few days goes on by, and a few of the people that were in the initial mastermind and I were hanging out, and they're like, yo, Jerome, for these past couple of weeks, he's been working. I mean, he said that he's stressed at this point because he's been working so hard. I was like, Jerome, he hasn't been working. He hasn't been working at all. He's been struggling with analysis paralysis. Well, what do you mean he's been working? And that's when they tell me that Jerome's been studying a lot, asking a whole bunch of questions, working. I don't know what happened to Jerome, but I can tell you this. What he was going through was analysis paralysis because number one, he didn't understand the difference between learning and doing. I thought they were the same thing. No, learning is when you input information, doing is when you output information. What Jerome was doing was he was inputting a lot of information. He was taking in information from the videos, the PDFs, and also when he was asking me questions, he was inputting in information even more, which is fine. Learning is a part of the whole process of mastering a skill set, but never confuse it with doing. Doing, in Jerome's case, would have been setting up the listing page, negotiating with the suppliers, finding the right product. Those are all activities which allow him to output information. So one of the reasons that you may currently be struggling with analysis paralysis is because you think learning and doing are the same exact things. You gotta separate it, okay? So that's number one. Number two is that Jerome was trying to be strategic from the very beginning. He thought, uh, yo, I mean, I have enough information. I could be strategic at this point. Let me start to see how many bullets each listing needs. Let me start to play around with the headlines. But you can't be strategic until you have data. Because once you have data, that's when you could be like, this is useless and this is useful. And here's a hack to fix this. If you're someone who's trying to be strategic even before you have any data, I'm sure you've heard of the quote, work smarter, not harder. But here's the thing. This quote is only for someone who has skin in the game. If you're someone who has no skin in the game, very minimal experience, and you're being sold on the quote, work smarter, not harder, I guarantee you, you're going to struggle with analysis paralysis. So the fix is to flip it. Work harder, not smarter. So if you're someone that's currently struggling with analysis paralysis, follow this quote instead. Work harder, not smarter. Immediately, there's gonna be this primal urge to start moving. I recall there was this one time when I was in Toastmasters, I was this guy's men, a mentor, he was my mentee, and he just kept talking himself out of giving the first ever speech. He did a lot of the table topics, but he didn't want to give his first formal speech. I told him, work harder, not smarter. And something about that quote hit his heart. And he was just like, I see exactly what you're saying. And that's when he got started giving his speech. The third fix is to stop trying to be perfect. Okay? Instead, try to perfect. Being perfect is what I call the, the wrong mindset. It's a very poor state of thinking, especially for someone with level up mentality. It's much better to perfect, get something started and keep refining it over time. So this is the mental hack right here. Instead of trying to be perfect, try to perfect. And the fourth thing that you want to understand is something that is not necessarily a fix, but it's more so of an explanation of why you do what you do. Because you may be wondering, why is it that I keep struggling with analysis paralysis? Why am I keep falling into this path? One of the reasons why is because you're superimposing the teachings from school into the real world. In school, you had Miss Shepard who told you, hey, Jonathan, Jerome, Susie, this Friday is going to be your test. So make sure you get all the studying done before Friday, okay? This is the deadline. 
And you're thinking that in the real world, there's going to be a Miss Shepherd that's telling you, hey, get all of your learning till this point, and that's what you're going to be doing. But in the real world, often we have to create our own curriculum. You may have a boss, you may have a parent that gives you all these different guidelines, but for the most part, whenever you're struggling with analysis paralysis with something, that means you don't have that guardian. You don't have that Miss Shepherd. Therefore, it's imperative to do the three steps I mentioned beforehand. Uh, stop trying to be so strategic from the get-go. Start to distinguish learning from doing and start to perfect rather than trying to be perfect. Eventually, you'll start to realize that, yo, I don't have a Miss Shepherd in the real world. I am the Miss Shepherd. I'm the person that creates the deadline and I'm the person who executes the deadline. Each time that you overcome analysis paralysis, there's that level of confidence that you feel because you understand that there's something that you can do about it. No one who becomes great in a field is struggling with analysis paralysis for too long. The heart is meant to lead and the mind is meant to follow. The heart knows and the mind thinks. So allow the heart to lead the way, take action, overcome analysis paralysis for good. If you want more practical insights like this into communication skills and productivity, be sure to check out Level Up Mentality, a guide to re-engineer your mindset for confidence. In this book, you're going to get a lot of teachings regarding productivity, which are highly practical, not just motivational fluff, but they're practical step-by-step -step guidelines that allows you to be more consistent, allows you to be disciplined, and allows you to unlock your ambition that has been dormant within. Level Up Mentality is currently out in Gumroad, Audible, and Amazon format. I'll drop all the links in the description box and the pinned comment right on below. And thank you very much for joining the Armani Talks YouTube channel.